the ground is seemingly normal again, not glowing. Anos, you saw what you saw. For a brief second there, your spirits were lifted. And they're slowly starting to be clouded over again. But you know that there's... You felt that feeling of adventure and it's not all dire and grim. For just even a brief second. I can just pause for a moment and look at the corpse. Yeah, before you lay a... Before you lay a tiefling, rotted skin, tattered clothes, has a platinum amulet around it, its neck. What do you guys want to do? Does uh, any of this rotting tree radiate any kind of magic uh, energy at all that could be used in like a component pouch or something like that? Or is it just dead and gone? No, it looks pretty faded away now. The vampiric essence... Um, that surrounded it is dissipated with that fire. Um, is there anything here? Let me do perception. I don't like. I like where your head's at. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask a question for me. Damn, that's a fail. Um, trying to find something that, if ingested, would be poisonous. No, you, you don't. And you think you someone would probably not be very happy with a piece of the this rotted skin but that's anyone you know how are you going to get someone to ingest rotted skin from this tiefling you know you could just go to a graveyard to find that someone right. have a pretty bad stomach bug for a while you know okay what's this platinum necklace I assume this is a cursed something bad well you can go up there and check it out Move on in, bro. I trust you. I want to touch it. I'm good. Let's bury yeah, it. But. I, I remember somebody saying last session that somebody here has identify, so I'm just going to sit and lean on my staff until somebody else identifies that. Because <laughs> <laughs> the guy that's wearing this is now an insane tree monster. Yeah, you also mean, yeah. yeah, you go. I'll take the case. He was right. a great general, though. So Atlas, out of like... Uh, uh, Green, was- first, before you do that spell, make an arcana check. So Atlas, out of like a militaristic respect, would kind of take a knee and, you know, appreciate what he was, not what he is now. But, you know, from what I understand of the the battles he led and the history, the, mm-hmm. the part he played in history is pretty impressive. So moment of silence for that. All right. Uh, Green, you're about to cast identify at the uh, word of Jacques, but you realize it's not magical or any magic it once held is no longer there. I do not believe that this is necessary, friends. Uh, It has nothing left. Well, it holds no sentimental value to me, so uh, I leave it in your care. Marcus, what do you want to do with it? And I, I... gratefully bow and sh- and show respect to uh, Atlas and Anos and be like this is this was your baby before I got here so I think it's fitting for Anos to have it all right I'll, I'll just walk up kneel down grab it and just kind of yank it off its bones okay take a uh, look at it you do that uh it seems to be worth a pretty penny any kind of engravings no real engravings it looks like it held some type of magical essence once upon a time but again it uh it doesn't seem like it does anymore all right i'll just add a platinum amulet keep it as a reminder of what bad things happen when this group goes off on their own. I suppose so. Uh, you look at it and it seems to be worth anywhere between like 3,500 gold pieces to 5,000 gold pieces. Nice. So mark that down in your notes. Alright. And uh, you were wearing a ring, um, you, Alexander. Yeah, put you, put, you put on the ring that Exarloth gave you. And you notice it Pulsing faintly. 
is there any way that I can kind of like tap into that? Yeah, yeah. You, you're as you're thinking that, you instantly have a link. Um, and anyone else who has a ring, you notice yours is glowing as well. Side note: What happened to the little nubby thing? When we sh- oh well, you we buried know. that. We buried it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Sorry. You don't know. Yep. Fair. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyone that wants to put their ring on for Magzarloth can do so. Oh God! Um, intelligence check of Atlas. Um, no, that's a saving throw. Uh, do intelligence check. Fifteen. Yeah, it doesn't seem. No harm. No harm in it. I mean, he gave it. So far, he's been truthful to you, as far as you know. And okay. yeah, right. he gave you this ring to contact you. Green, what are you? Are you putting yours on? Or are you gonna? I uh, think I'm gonna hold off for a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, Atlas and Anos, you hear in your mind. So, it is done. You've proven yourself worthy of my attention. Now to speak about the things promised. This contract and the curse that lay upon you, Anos. Which of these would you like to know more about? And, uh, side note, while you two are kind of staying and standing in silence green and uh jacques uh you notice um atlas put on a ring and you notice it's glowing and they all just they both kind of like stare up and close their eyes like as if they're listening to something um what what are you doing at the moment jacques you're muted buddy you muted yourself green did you not get a uh, captain planet ring <laughs> Oh no, I, I did, but I am uh, I'm still not 100% sure of the fellow who gave it to us. <laughs> he got the heart ring. He's kind of embarrassed. Yeah, he's embarrassed. Um, Man, fuck y'all. <laughs> if you didn't have heart, you don't got Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume once their, their trance is over, we will march off to slay some other creature and hopefully get more gold. <laughs> um... I want to. I, mean, I, I want to know not. about the contract. The contract. Do they out of character? Are they? Do they think this and it happens, or do they say it and we hear half of the conversation? Just all know. Oh no, Atlas, what are you doing? Um, I'll, I'll say it out loud. Okay, he's saying it out loud. Tell me of the contract, you know, and you're like, what the fuck? Right, uh, but you don't, you don't hear, <laughs> you don't hear what's being said in response to that. Right. You only hear what they're saying. He goes, The contract cannot just bind a soul, and especially a dragon cannot do this. Instead, a devil has to do that. Now, if the dragon has been granted the servitude of a lesser devil, then that means there has to be a seal from one of the nine hells. Reveal the seal by burning the contract don't worry if it's a real devil contract it will be resistant to the elements but not immune so only place in it some coals for a small bit and I say not out loud but in my life the curse yes Ask yourself this. Should I gather the information that would allow you to stop this contract? Would you be ready for the action that is required of you to stop it? The Nine Hells is... Oh, never mind. Forget I said that word. (laughs) 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 Uh-huh. Head was going anyway. For the, for the record, though, you said must be a seal of the nine hells. Am I allowed to know that? Yes. I'm looking yes. for a seal. Right? Well, okay. it, it, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, you know that part. Um, yeah, I, I was reading. I was reading from another prompt. Um, 
<laughs> oh, yes, Spoiler. the curse. There is a couple of ways to cure it. It's unfortunate that a human encounter such things as their life is already so short. Though you might have the power to actually get it done, the most sensible way is the path that I am currently forging with you and for you. This path takes you to this Fulton. And you hear this too, Atlas. Um, but does not end with him dying. Instead, he will become an instrument of mine. And he will be the one that will undo this curse upon you. Do you wish to know how, or do you wish to keep that a secret? How? Oh, and I say that out loud. Uh, yeah, Jacques, it's been like a minute or two, and all of a sudden it's just, how? Basically. I think this is how we make our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so... Well, the spell would require you to die. But Be specific, Aeonos must die, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he would be reborn into his old body afterwards. The only catch is that it might require you to wait a few months after the spell is cast. This old necromantic spell that we will use Fulton for requires him to be alive and unspoiled. It won't consume him. Do not worry about that. It's not that type of necromantic spell. But he is a powerful caster and I sense... He has grown even more powerful since your last encounter over a year ago. Tell me, is this frighten you, Aenos? Or are you willing to do what must be done to get will, your old self back? I will do what must be done. Very well. I really like the like meta. I really like this Xarloth character because he's basically sending me on the little journeys I wanted to go on, anyways. Killing the things I wanted to kill. It's it's excellent. <laughs> it's almost like he. It's almost like he knew that that's what he wanted. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost crazy. like he, like he read my mind. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. Oh. It's convenient. <laughs> I mean, if he read my mind, he'd know I still don't trust him as far as I can throw him. He's a big yeah. fish. I can't yeah. throw him. Yeah. Um. I'm glad to hear of your resolve. And I'm glad to see that you are capable and worthy of being my tools for this encounter. But here's the thing. If it requires you to die... What do you break first? The curse? Or the contract? I mean, obviously the contract. Now, it might be possible to cast the spell on you and wait until you actually do die to be reborn. But the only issue there is that Anos may not control his own death. Exactly. If you break the contract first, then this dragon will be very angry at you. You're not but, scared of Ormash, are you? Of course not. But if we're in servitude to you, I mean, do we have your protection? I don't recall offering necessarily my protection i recall offering my knowledge and aid to you are, are you not a loyal master oh i don't have to be what does servitude mean to you 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 get excited at the thought of us uh pursuing fulton on your behalf but then you cast us aside when things I, get difficult i don't cast you aside i 
won't actively seek your end unless you betray me. But this Vormesh is your own doing, and if I can help you break the contract, that should be enough, no? Uh, I mean, we could put a pin in it. <laughs> Very well. But do this thing about the contract, throw it in some coals, and we will talk again later. Put the ring on and search your mind and soul, and I will answer. Uh, Atlas takes the ring off. And instantly, your eyes open up, and you see Jacques and Grim just kind of idly doing whatever they've been doing. I'm, I'm, I'm napping against and, uh, that rock. All right. Yeah. Anos, um, anything else for you? Uh, he said that he didn't, or maybe I'm just confused, but he did. Did he say that there was another way going about it, or was it more just a choice of which to do first? Uh, he, he did say that there was another possible way of going about it, but the path that he set you on is kind of his first option. If you wish to ask him about other okay. paths, he might help you out on that. What is this other path he spoke of? Unfortunately... I cannot grant you this. You would have to find it on your own, but wishes are a thing. They are not just stories told. You could find an entity powerful enough to grant you such a thing, but they would likely be fickle and might not grant you what you wish. Another way... Possibly is to seek a divine boon. But these are all things down a path that I am not going on. With me, this Fulton, this necromantic spell, I could do this for you. But you would have to capture him, or at least trick him to come to me. Perhaps set a trap of some sort. You now, it seems, as he searches your thoughts, have a spell caster in your mix. You do not know much about him. Find out more in his abilities. He might become useful to you and your party. How are we to bring Fulton to you? Do you have a way that is more expedient? When the time approaches, I will send one of my vessels towards you with more knowledge or perhaps an item that might aid in his capture. Very well. But that is all. You have... Proving yourself worthy, despite Sir Tun's tricks laid out for you and traps. The party overall did well against that interesting creature. Did you not know what he had become? I knew what he had become, but did not know the extent of it. And how powerful he was, you were very resourceful. Your party was. But that is all for now. If you need to talk urgent matters, just reach into your heart and soul and I will find you. And the link cuts off. All and right. A and O's, you kind of come out of it. I'll take the ring off. Okay. What do you guys wish to do? How long did their combo take? Oh, uh, about 10, 15 minutes. Well, if no one has any other pressing matters, I'm going to sit against this rock and sleep for an hour. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys can take a short rest here if you want. I mean, I assume short rest, you can still talk amongst the party and we can... Yeah, absolutely. And okay, just and really hit... quick. Yeah. How much is that platinum am amulet again? Um, between 3,500 gold pieces and 5,000 gold pieces. <clears throat> cool. All right. And um, just <clears throat> spend your hit dice of how you want them to be spent. And uh, guys, talk amongst yourself for a little bit. Or we can just speed past it. I mean, if we're just going to rest, I think that's fine. <laughs> okay. Rest in silence. And um, make sure to take that out of your hit die as well. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to have to spend some hit dice. Okay. Sounds good. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck so you hell. guys just spend the... Uh, the hour in silence. Um. So about D eight. I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll basically I'll reach out to Jacques a little bit and say I know you're confused. Happy to answer any questions. You've proved yourself more than more than capable and and more than trustworthy. You know the the rings are a little little odd. The little ring talk, but I assume this is how you've uh, probably built some of your wealth or maybe come into your land. I don't really know. But uh, so far, it hasn't led us astray. And killing vampire trees seems to be in the good of everyone. So I'll follow on. It's weird, yes, but I'll follow on. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not really... Uh, my personality is not one to be bogged down in the um, social workings of your kingdom that you're building or the people that you work for. But as long as the adventures are fun and we're not slaying any innocent, I'm, I'm definitely here for the trip. Uh, insight. Fuck. Okay. I'm the most trustworthy person you've ever met. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't gleam anything from the conversation. He seems to be telling the truth, but you don't gleam one way or another. What for? <clears throat> about you, Green? Why are you here? Uh, well, uh, I actually owe them a debt to my people. Uh, I have offered my services to this group as a payment of the gratitude that they've showed my people. Oh? What was said gratitude? My... Uh, my cousin, the, uh, the dwarven... Uh, Glenagan phone breaker. That one. Um, that I'm sure you've heard of it, but uh, actually, didn't you tell us you heard? That's why you were there. Yep. But anyway, um, that that you heard rumor of, uh, and I'm assuming you visited. That is my cousin. Haven't made it up there yet, but good to know. Good yeah, you uh, you haven't it's made it up there, but that is actually the. Uh, the reason the initial rumor was yeah the dwarven nation someone gave them a dwarven nation and that's he's talking about that so and this I, new and budding nation gave part of their land to your cousin to found their own nation yes, yes. okay hmm. well, so wait I am, for i'm all about uh going away from the existing kingdoms and status quo. So that's why I initially sought out the, the Dwarven nation. So I'd be more than happy to stick with this one. Good. So, like I said, as long as we don't uh, decide that our best course of action is to start raiding and pillaging innocent villages and continue <laughs> to uh, rid the world of monsters, then I am a, I'm your man for as long as you 
see fit. Right. No. Uh, well, welcome aboard. Anos, anything to add? No, I just kind of sit hunched up against the tree. Okay, sounds good. Um, we'll wait for Zach to get back. Did you ever take your mask off? I am here. I'm just eating. Okay. I just kind of look at him, stare for a couple seconds, and say, no. Fair enough. <laughs> Stop that <I'd> ask. <laughs> Doesn't look comfortable to sleep in. It's made out of wood, right? Yeah, it's made of wood. All right. You guys finish up the long rest and uh, somewhat should... awkward. Oh, go for it. No, I'll try to break the break the tension a little bit and just say it's it's really interesting when he drinks wine through the mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys uh, take your finish your short rest and yeah, it's uh, about nine thirty now. So you're welcome to start leaving the forest. It'll take the rest of the day um, as you go along. BRB. Okay. As you go along through the forest, you're not noticing any of those will-o'-wisps anymore. And the tree canopy has opened up a little bit. And it's not as dark underneath the trees as it used to be. Um, and Matt, for your... Um, that this is where the party is that little token right there and the town is right here gotcha. oh, oh the town's actually right here but is that just south of the town oh, that is uh, the cave tam's cave um it is where this entire campaign started off as a one-shot adventure um yeah to the big cave yeah, it's fairly decent size, yeah. Does it hold any significance? Um, only to Atlas in this party. So, I'm sorry, I'm back. What what happened? Um, oh, Matt, about the cave. Yeah, Matt was inquiring about Tam's cave. And I told oh, him okay. it. Yeah. But you guys uh, make your way out of the forest. Actually, can we go check out Tam's cave real quick? I mean, uh, yeah. To make sure... I just want to make sure nothing is living in it. It's been a bit since we've been back. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a lot of strange denizens, honestly. So if we could just quickly go check it out. I could, I'll could. i run uh, Jacques down memory lane, try to build a social bond. Uh, you know, I'm okay with talking about all of that stuff. So okay. Before we go, I'd like to go to where the, the seed, where the amber, we placed it. Okay, that's I along that's the way. Closer, yeah. um, everyone take a long rest because it's the end of the day as you exit the forest. So go ahead and trigger that. Just hit long rest there, Matt. There you go. Where is that at? It's right by short rest on the character sheet. Oh, there. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and you guys start on your day. You acquire your ponies again and you ride past the area where you buried it and you real it's just a brambled mess huge just like 10 feet in diameter all these thick piercing vines that have n like inch long thorns on them that would be inside you right now hmm did it look kind of like the thing he was trying to do to atlas no <laughs> different um let's burn it down We've got our fire guy. Yeah. I'll toss That's an true. alchemist fire on it. Does it take care of it? Yep. It, it, uh, it, you throw alchemist fire on it? Well, I mean, somebody else who has it as a replenishable skill rather than an item where you have to buy again, it'd be great if you guys could toss a fireball that way. Huh? <laughs> what are we burning down? Sorry, I was trying to look at the character sheet because mine's um, not changing my stuff. Basically, thing. there was this little dot that was inside of Aonos that Xaroloth removed and came back to him. We buried it before we went into the battle, and the dot exploded into like vines and shrubs and dead brush. And so I just want to burn it. It's the last remnant of of the tree we just killed. Oh, yeah. How big mm. of a fire do we need? 
Uh, nuclear got, would be great. I, mean, I got, I I got okay. small fires, I got medium fires, and I got a really big fire. <laughs> uh, let's go small fire and see how it takes. Okay. I will just hit it with a, um, a uh, firebolt. All right. Firebolt. Firebolt. Um, yeah, and it catches and burns away. And you hear, you almost, it almost seems like there's some magic about it still, you know, but it, it takes care of that and it's completely Shit. burned. We should not have buried this. It's all right. You guys took care of it. Yeah, until it grows back. All right, I can um, bless it. <laughs> yeah, consecrate you, the ground. Yeah, yeah, consecrate the ground. I you mean, have holy water. Do it. I can. Why not? I can pray and I can lay this thing to rest proper. But let's. I, I honestly would recommend do it right because we just had a giant vampire forest that we just killed, <laughs> and let's not grow another one, right? I mean, um, I would like to use religion in that regard. Then, if I may, DM okay. to uh, yeah. to consecrate the ground. All right. Um, it's actually a spell, a ritual. Uh, it is. Yeah, it's uh, I think, h hollow. Hollow. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, I meant just like. Yeah, final it's a level rhyme. five. It's a level five spell. That I don't have. <laughs> well, you could easily learn it on a short rest. And like unlearn it, but. Uh, so. How about this? Can we roll to find out if we need to go this above and beyond? Should do we have anything to worry about? Basically, uh, for that green, you can roll a religion check. All right, green. It seems that you probably don't need to go that far for this. Um, if this thing had erupted inside a living being and was buried underground. If it had killed it this way, then maybe you would have to worry about this, but uh, the magic didn't seem to have a source to take hold to. There was no big plants around. There was nothing basically living that it could attach itself to. And therefore, by just destroying this thing, the last piece of Sertan, you fully and truly kill him. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And so you do that. Firebolt burns away. And uh, he is laid to rest. Thank God. That Chalk that one up as a win, boys. Got All a, the God. Got a vampire forest off our land. Oh, get off our land. <laughs> get off my lawn. All right, uh, you guys ride past that way. You ride past the town. Um, so another day's travel. Um, so Tam's cave didn't have anything in it, right? Yeah, you go to Tam's cave right in here. Uh, traps look inert. There is still. You guys still have a very large prez orb, or as Fulton calls it, a Fulton orb. In one of the caverns remember it was like a couple feet big and um you know you play that message again and uh, it touches your your heart a little bit um and then it fades um can i can we take this with us somehow yeah i've got it, it's pretty heavy it, it's i mean okay. it's not too heavy it's like a hundred pounds so currently my handy haversack is empty. Can I fit it inside of yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Say giant prez orb. Giant prez orb. Or and the message is from yeah. Tam, right? Yep, message from Tam. Um, and then I'm trying to. Oh, uh, Matt, are you trying to? No, I'm gonna wait till he's done. Okay. Because I'm actually gonna talk to him. Okay. Um, so I want to save that, and then on the meta, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do is uh, prepare. A legal argument that Fulton does not have rights to the orbs that he is infringing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and so we have letters from the lawyers back in Javar 
That's uh, true. We have the original Prezor with Tam talking to himself. We have character witnesses that Tam would never lie about this kind of stuff. And um, that Fulton is infringing upon our estate, a.k.a. my estate, because I'm the only fucking survivor. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so um cool uh that's that's where i'm headed with this uh, okay. on the meta i'll figure it out along the way i think but is right. there anything else in the cave or it's just a big cave i mean it has several rooms and passages but uh it lo it's very weird to you um it looks like it maybe once housed a great many things and there's definitely an arcane essence in this cave but they're all inert. It seems like any traps that were laid here or any spawns, magical uh, summons, are have already been used up. But you can see the faint etches of chalk in the corners of the stone. Um, but yeah, it's all empty now, except for this giant orb. How far from the town is it? Oh, uh, it's about 10 miles south. Yeah, and then oh. Jav Javar is about ten days away. So no, it's about four, days. four days away, four or five days away. Oh, I just had it written down that on was... horse, on horse, it's that far. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Atlas, question. So you were the last remaining survivor, and this was your uncle's cave, correct? That's correct. Yeah, uncle, not by actual relation, just inheritance and. Uh, Adoption, kind of. For adoption, right? Yeah. Since I was promised two acres for the slaying of the tree, yeah, can we just make that this cave instead? I know it's probably got sentimental value to you, which is why I ask you. That's I can hard always, to play. I can <laughs> always try to find another cave on your land, but I am looking for a cave. And so, so this one is close to your town and already fairly well excavated, it would work well for me. Why are you looking for a cave? If I'm being completely honest with you, yeah, um, I can go ahead and remove my cloaks, which would reveal that I am almost 75% bronze scale underneath instead of having skin. Oh, wow. Um, it is a perfect throwback to my um, lineage and for whatever reason, which even I have trouble understanding, at times I am drawn to caves as dwellings. And this one seems to be well-placed and in good condition. Like I said, I could always find another and use that as part of my two acres, but since this one is already found. So does this mean you have like a dragon blood bloodline or something like that? It doesn't exact exactly mean that. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> What way is the cave facing, by the way? This is the opening. It's facing uh, northeast. It's pretty I mean, close. yeah, the opening is northeast, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy eastern facing caves by default, but uh, northeast is pretty close. <laughs> um, I, I will think about it, okay? But you absolutely have done enough to earn it, right? I would just need to get beyond some emotional stuff, but... Right. Uh, no, I don't... That's why I said I don't want to, like, be like, hey, can I have your uncle's cave if there's still something there? <laughs> Yeah, um, real quick here. Um, so let's do this. Deception, and what was that rolled? That was an... What is that, an 8? I rolled only an 8. Oh, I rolled a 16. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, he hams it up. It, this cave just means so much to Atlas. Uh, and, and if he gave it to you, it would be a very immense sign of respect. Um you know it, mm -hmm. so yeah you feel that come across Jacques this cave does mean have a lot of sentimental value to Atlas and if he decided to allow you to stay in here it would be a sign of respect and trust um, and if so, you can't part with it like I said I have enough fireballs to make my own on two acres. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's great. For the sake of, uh, you know, physical exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm ready to, part of me is ready to stop calling it Tam's cave. So I, I will get back to you on that. Okay. Especially if you uh, are worried about unruly residents taking up home in it. 
Yeah, I'm glad nothing's here, right? So got the Prezorb and yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just bats, you know, more bats than you remember from because basically this has been sealed was sealed magically, right? When you first entered it. And only you guys could enter it initially. And that has seemed to dissipate and now there are more natural things growing in the cracks and crevices. You know, more mushrooms, there's more bats, smaller things, but left unchecked, you think maybe something bigger that's looking for a cave might find its way in here. Yeah. You know, caves are just some kind of weird areas. dragon man. Yeah, yeah, those guys are all about caves. <laughs> nice. I mean, you might have to contend with Harald or Vormesh, as is his dragon name. Um, you might have to contend with him when he comes call and be like, hey guys, what's up? Yeah, we still got another two years, men, probably. <laughs> yeah. Year and a half, man. So, um, cool. Okay, sounds good. I I thank everybody sincerely that uh, we stopped by to check out the cave. So, um, and then I will catch um, Jacques up on the high level of Fulton, right? Because uh, you know we're gonna have a council meeting. Grim didn't actually hear all this, so I wanted to I want to tell Grim, right? Jacques happens to be there. I'm not gonna tell him to go away. Yeah. But I'm more so catching Grim up on it. Um. That and this is on the drive, right? Horseback ride, so no. as much time as I need to convey. Um, which is that they're originally on our land, uh, a group of people, um, from Devon, led by House Saris, the Council of Five specifically, uh, came to our land. It was a lot of people, they set up an outpost. Um, there was a guy named Lieutenant Marrow who's now dead, uh, he was the like soldier right. leader. Uh, Harald was a dragonborn, um, red red or silver dragonborn red. that led the unseen so he's like a ninja and the unseen were kind of like me but i come from a different a completely different group but we're trained similarly um where i'm better obviously i'm still standing here and i've killed like 30 of them so you know but uh fulton was a wizard that was also sent by by the council of five lord as well. saris it's lord saris it's interesting though that we heard that fulton was crossing our direction in the desert that fulton was acting on his own he's selling these fulton orbs and all this other stuff so it sounds like he may have been like i made enough money i'm a peace out i don't need you anymore so i don't mm -hmm. know about that but uh that's fulton and it sounds like um Xarloth would like us to track down fulton which is something i want to do anyways so um i am being genuine so everyone everything i said was true like on the map yeah. everything i said was true um and then any little details that come up i'd like them to just know that i told you know what i'm saying yeah, just yeah. So, so everyone's on the you same explain page. the situation okay perfect yeah did you explain the that we uh, almost died no i didn't actually did you so, explain the afterwards the dragon oh, contract Fulton? and all that no so okay yeah so we're at this camp well, we're green at the knows but jacques doesn't know right. we're at the we're at the out well I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to do that, honestly. I, I, I'm more catching up Grim. I'm including Jock. I want him to feel included. But I'm also not ready to lay, air all the dirty laundry. But I want Grim to be 100% on the same page as I'm on right now. So I want I want to bring him up to speed and also bring up Jock. But I don't think I would reiterate the devil contract to Grim, who already knows about yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Sounds you will, good. You will notice, even without an insight check, that I will stray during your conversations and get bored fairly easy. I'm, I'm an extremely, nice. extremely young person, and I'm just here for the adventure. And when the talking is like too much, I kind of like make little fireballs in my hand. What's this or, over here? Yeah, <laughs> squirrel. There, there was a, there was another like you once. <laughs> His name was Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So you guys make it back to the town. It's about noonish now on the 8th of uh uh fuck talosi Tal oh i've had the pronunciation Talosia. yeah thank Talosia. you yeah talosia yeah. um as you guys roll back into town what it's do you want to do here ether. um how how long were we gone you were overall three three and a half days And then, I mean, really, if we think about it, there's nothing pressing, right? We know Fulton, you, in general, went one direction. You know you wanted to talk to Lady Torhana. Exactly. Right. You we wanted to have, to have a council meeting. 
Yep, council meeting. But that, other than that, there's nothing pressing. Now, now would be a good time for a council meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well. Okay. Well, Green was like the secretary, yeah, essentially. I'm, I'm like just the reporter, so. Yeah. Um, as you are stepping up to do that, um, is Jacques invited or what's like, uh, what's the situation of Jacques? If you're going towards the council meeting, I'm just going to ask you, do I need to go with you or can I go do something more fun? You can definitely go do something more fun. Fantastic. I'm going to go find your militiamen and see what trouble I can cause. <laughs> Sounds good. Test it out. I bow and excuse myself. We got. If you're interested in some cave digging too, I mean, we could definitely start some uh, some digging operation, mining operation around town. So start, feel free well, to find a foreman. Start Once summoning a, a fireball <laughs> above me as I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if, we have this whole problem where we have to transport the mine minerals back to town. Uh, we could just mine it here. You just gotta make us a cave, you know. <laughs> It's a good way to build equity. You know, there's a lot of monetary benefit in it for you, too. All right. It's true. So as you guys start heading up the stairs towards the manor house, uh, a rider on horseback approaches. And uh, he gets off and he goes, uh, You there? Uh, is there? Is there an Atlas Sertova here? And he uh, uses he uses your full name. Yeah, so... There's going to be a fight. Does he have a sigil <laughs> on him? Nope, he is Not wearing all on. gray. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Is there an Atlas Sertova here? I have a parcel from him. Uh, to uh, him, to Javar. From Javar. Uh, one second, one second, one second. Uh, is he loud enough that I hear him before I wander off? Exa yes. So 21 deception, and I'll say... I'll say he's not here at the moment, but I'll definitely get this to him. Ah, uh, it's for his hands only, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, it does say to or leave in care of an Alexander Macedon. Um, I surely, actually, and that might be, actually be higher. Let me see here. Uh, so that's actually six higher. That's twenty six. Okay. Um, surely we can come to a, to an arrangement. I, I promise you, I'll get it to him. I don't know. I I have pretty explicit orders here. Um, let me just roll D. <laughs> I, I like he money. can't. <laughs> like he. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, you seem like a pretty okay fellow. Uh, here, here you go. And he tosses it to you. <laughs> you know goes, what? Here you are. You know, on second thought, it's so in value. I'm going to throw it now. <laughs> <laughs> he just tosses I it to you. With it, but here, hope you catch Sign it. Sign your name. Uh, and work with and Atlas hams it up. He puts it away, very protected. Oh, it oh. will certainly, certainly oh, get. To I'm the off right. to Javar again. If you ever need anything, uh, check out the Javar Post. Okay, and he pony rides Express. his pony back. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Oh, that was that was intense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so. I'll read it whenever I get a, get a chance. I, I'd probably rather read it going to the council meeting rather than after. Uh, okay. But I do so you want to open it? It's a box. It's a box. It's a okay. box. I mean, I make sure that the post guy leaves. Yeah, and he, then, he, he leaves. The box? What's in the box? <laughs> All right. Yeah. What's in the box? <laughs> you open it up, and there's a letter <laughs> sitting on top of some cl some. It looks like wrapping, but it's cloth wrapped around an object. You pick up the paper, and it's a little blood stained. Oh, and God. we'll take another little short break. Oh, cliffhanger! Nice. Right. I had to go.